All right, Facebook Live, Life on Rehearse. Welcome to the show. We have Melissa Don in studio, CEO of your life. And we are going to be on the air very soon. Like now? Like right now. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the show. Good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed, a show about the ins and outs of family life. So your life isn't going exactly as planned. Well, you're not alone and we're here to help out. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in free retirement home search and senior transition support. And I'm Corey Serrata, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming up today on the first half of our show, are you the best version of yourself? If you don't know how to answer that question, no worries. Melissa Dawn, she's the author, she's a speaker, and she's the founder of CEO of Your Life, and she's going to teach us how to become that person. I cannot wait. Very interesting, Corey. Matt, you are a rock star <laughs> when it comes to driving. I cannot believe. You know, you've heard, he drives me in almost every time we do the show together, and um, I thought, nah, I don't know how this is going to go today, and you just... Like a, like a superstar. We actually made it in record time. Yeah. Uh, the, the roads were uh, not so, uh, were, were not bad, uh, uh, greasy, but we come in from the West Island every every uh, show, and we like to do live shows when we can, and that, that was okay. You just got to be careful, uh, pay attention, and don't drive too fast. It was a heck of a lot better where I was last week, though, uh, Corey. I was in Whistler, uh, BC with my son, a trip of a lifetime, a really a bucket list trip. And uh, Vancouver was eight and nine degrees. Whistler was around one and two degrees, and I had a few days of, of skiing. And uh, yeah, very grateful for that. Um, and you know, we are very grateful for our second half, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, you absolutely don't want to miss the second half of our show, as we have Stanley Cup champion and author of the best selling. Uh, book playing with fire Theo Fleury most of you know Theo Fleury he holds nothing back as he talks about his troubled past the trauma he experienced as a victim of sexual abuse and his incredible advocacy work for those with mental illness addiction and trauma victim victims Corey that's going to be after the 430 news I look forward to hearing that as well so let me start get us going we are very excited to have in studio with us Melissa Don. She's a certified life coach and business coach. She's the founder of, and of CEO of Your Life. She's also a motivational speaker. She's trained in energy, uh, essentially an energy practitioner. She practices intentionality and best-selling author of I Attract What I Am. She's here with us in studio today to talk about how to help us be our best version of ourselves. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So I think just to start out, how does one even begin to do this? So I suspect there's a story behind it. So <laughs> can you please share that with us? Well, it was just about nine years ago. I still remember I was sitting on my wooden living room floor with my hands between my head saying like, how the heck did I get here? And I had just had my second divorce. I had primary custody of my four-year-old son and I was in a situation at work where I had to change jobs ASAP. So like everything was happening at the same time and I felt stuck. I, I didn't know what to do. I knew I had to change. I, I was responsible for my son. I wanted to be the best mom possible. So I couldn't like stay as a victim in this place. And somebody had recommended that I try a life coach and I, I didn't even know what a life coach was at that point. So I, I went on Google, I did a few searches and I came across a really great one. And within six months of life coaching, my life had totally turned around. Um, she had started doing exercises and teaching me all these things that truly to me are things that I believe we should be taught in school and we're not. And I was sharing all these exercises with people around me and I saw their life starting to transform as well. And I couldn't believe how just a few basic, simple tools and change of mindset can be so transformative. And I said, you know what, at the time I was VP marketing, and I said, I want to help as many people as I can become the CEO of your life, you know, help them create the lives that they really, really want and let them know that it's possible. No matter what situation you're in, you can change it a lot, uh, around. And that's when I went to the Coaches Training Institute and I became a certified life coach. And uh, slowly, slowly, I started to build my business. And within six months, I had left my VP marketing job and 
just coaching full time. That's uh, Melissa Don. She's the founder of CEO of your life. She's talking to us to be um, your best self. And that's a perfect example. And then you're leading by example. First of all, Melissa, thank you for coming into studio. <laughs> for the, you're coming from the South Shore. You brought your family uh, with you in here with the studio. So first of all, thanks for being a trooper. And it does show a sign of your, your character and perseverance. And, and we do appreciate that. And, and you've talked about, uh, Melissa, you know, everyone has a purpose in life and has a unique value. It's one thing saying it, but it's, it's another thing trying to, to recognize it. Um, a lot of people don't even realize it. Uh, I think I fit into that category as well. I was like you, Melissa, a corporate person for many, many years. And uh, the last few years, uh, my wife and I have, have uh, just switched gears in helping um, moms and dads transitioning um, in from homes into retirement residences. And we know we have found our calling. It's just you wake up every morning inspired and motivated. But it took an, an event like switching like that for me to even realize it. I had no idea. So how can everyone's got it in them? So how can we help someone even begin to identify their purpose in life? That's a really good question. I remember one of the first exercises I did with my coach that helped me a lot and that I'm doing with my clients today as well is she said for three weeks, write down everything that makes you happy and what makes you unhappy. And you don't even realize everything in a day that makes you happy and unhappy until you actually start writing it down at night. And then as you're writing it down, you're starting to see patterns. And I remember when I was doing it, I started to see the times I was happiest was when I was talking to people and I was having deep yeah. conversation, you know, it wasn't like doing marketing. It was like, <laughs> tell me like what's going on and not just like superficially, but really like, let, let's have real conversations here. And the things I didn't like were, you know, getting involved in marketing campaigns and all this, but it just, it, I mean, I liked my job, but it, it wasn't fueling me, but having deep conversations and listening to people and helping them out, I, I could do it all day long, even if I didn't get paid. So having done this exercise really, really helped me become aware of what fueled me. So I highly recommend this exercise to everybody and you'll just start becoming more aware. So then you can see, okay, I need to do more of this and I need to do less of this. And that's the very beginning. It, you got to follow the threads of what really fuels you. Fair enough. It's actually an in interesting activity. I think I'm going to go and try it. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel like I'm very motivated in the work I do. I think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Could you tell? Could Definitely. you tell? No, One no, of the most motivated shock. people. <laughs> <laughs> so that to me sounds, what you suggested sounds like a strategy. Can you tell us some other strategies that you teach? Well, it's all about the person. Everyone is unique. Everyone has their own unique values, their own unique purpose. So it's about, first of all, also getting clear on where you're at right now. You know, a lot of people don't want to deal with things. They put things under the carpet and then a life event happens like a divorce or a death or something shocking. And then you're forced to go and revisit everything that you put under the carpet. So I start with taking a, a, an assessment like where, are, how is your romantic life? How is your physical environment? How's your career, your financial situ uh, situation? your spiritual growth, looking at all areas of your life, because when we're clear with where we're at, then we know what we can work towards. And not only do we have to realize where we're at, but we have to accept where we're at. If we're resisting it, then we can't move forward. So that's one of the steps is to get clear on that. And then to get clear on who we are, really. So there's different exercises I do with different people, but one of the core exercises is how to get clear on your core values. Because when you're clear on your core values, it helps you make decisions. You know, is this the right job for me? Is this the right partner for me? And it's, it's even great for business. Like, how do I brand myself? I brand myself around my values. So there's an exercise that I have actually, listeners can get it online. It's at a CEO of your life, your dot life forward slash values to help you get clear on them. So to understand those, those, uh, those core values, which, which makes sense. And, and that could be different for, for many different people. You almost have to personalize it to, to yourself. Exactly. Um, you're listening to Life on Rehearse, and, and uh, that's Melissa Don. She's the, the founder of CEO of your life, and, and uh, she's talking to us about how to be your best self. Um, you talked about a couple of strategies, Melissa. Very intriguing. Um, you know, we're approaching traffic soon, but we're, you know, we're, we'd like to uh, for you to stay with us, and we're going to talk about when you get back, um, the biggest mistake you might be making when it comes to listening to the advice of others 
and it's one that can totally derail your life. So let's head out to the CJD Traffic Center with Lauren Glazer, and we're going to hear all about that when Melissa comes back. How fast is that? How fast is that? So we are going to come back with that question, and it was good that we had the long, mm -hmm. <laughs> the long go. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that worked out well. Time. Your answers race. are great. I really want to go to this. Can I go back to this, or even you, Matt? The role of the victim. I I, I love yeah. that so question. So I, I have to come back with the question, right? The yeah. teaser. So because the way I would do it is I would say, what about the naysayers? Yes. Okay. The naysayers. The naysayers. Or, gonna, all the yabat. Yeah, those yabats. Yeah, yeah. The role of uh, so the role yeah. of the victim question would be after the after teaser I question. You, but how are you going to connect the naysayers? Because uh, yeah, naysayers to me are the victims. You know, those are the ones that they okay. say they yo, oh, but that sounds good. But, nah, nah, nah. I, yeah, but that, that's how I would do it. I, yeah, however you want to do it, I think. That, so first, we're going to go to the um, biggest mistake because I think that you're when we talk and uh, I put it in brackets looking for approval. That that is the biggest mistake is that people are always looking for other people who approval. Well, it's because they look at people who they think are successful and they, they copy what they're doing, but just because it works for them, it doesn't mean it works for you. And a lot of people make mistakes, say, well, they're, they're so successful, like it has to work, you know, and I'm in that mistake too. So, and then looking at the other questions, which ones would you really like us to get to? So we're going to do this one for sure. I'm going to ask, first come back with the teaser question, then Matt's going to do that. The role of the victim one will be the second question. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. We have some time. We have about eight yeah. minutes. They're, they're all good. I mean, um, okay, so we'll just maybe this going. one I would. In my, if I yeah. have to eliminate, yeah. we'll, okay, maybe yeah. not number six, but the other ones we would get to. Yeah, the number six one might be. Because yeah. uh, we're going to get to the trust. So you're going to ask about the role of the victim. Uh, that's Matt. I'm going to ask about trust factor. Mm -hmm. And then, and then your gut, the red flag. So Melissa, we're at around. 427 ish. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on around 420. And around 427, we're going to be heading out asking you advertorial. So, how can people reach you? Okay. And then we got to do a little teaser for the uh, heading into news. Okay. And uh, you'll let me know if I'm too long on any. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. You didn't get one. Yeah. Did I know, know because I, was, I paused. I'm like, I no, can go good. on, but I'm yeah. going to you for And a you know what? But we got body language there, yeah. and that's why it's so important. Like, we, we'll take phone ins yeah, if, if we can, so but you, it hard. doesn't, you'll never be able to yeah. uh, replicate. You know our body and our yeah. visual language because we're we're Cause reading on off the of each phone other. Phone people really go long. They they because we can't go. Yeah, we're like this. <laughs> <and> they, no, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> they can't hear us. <laughs> hmm. That's my wife. She's calling in. Oh, it was a it was a rad oh, okay. a senior transition. She's she's advertising. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my the, the text that came in, that's all for us. That was a quarrel. No, that, that, like, that was for Dr. Joe. What? CJD Restore Watch for more approaches. <laughs> that's 401. So Dr. Joe hadn't started. He finished. 401. Oh, yeah, he just finished. Yeah. That's all for us. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, for Dr. Joe. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who's coming in now? Me. You're coming in. So another minute or so. Do you want to be on Facebook Live or you want me to avoid you? Mm -hmm. Avoid you? <laughs> <laughs> Doing great, Melissa. Goes fast. Book? Show, did you have the book cover? Robert Wise. Oh, we're on. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my God. There's a song, though. I gotta go back to my chair. Welcome back. You're listening to Life on Rehearse. I'm Corey Serrata with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking with Melissa Don, founder of CEO of Your Life, and she's teaching us how to be our best self. Right before traffic, we asked Melissa a really important question about what the biggest mistake people might be making when it comes to listening to the advice of others. And in fact, what we talked about off air was that that, can, that, that mistake can actually totally derail their life. So share with us what that is, please. A lot of people look at what works for others and they say, well, this person was successful for it, so I'll do the same thing. 
and I had made my, that mistake too, like following different coaches. I was like, well, these coaches are millionaires and they're doing super well, so I'll be doing the same thing. And I had hired a coach and she was like telling me like what templates to use and what to say, but it didn't feel authentic to me. So if something doesn't feel right for you, if something doesn't feel authentic, it means it's not your path. And just because it was successful and it worked for someone else, it doesn't mean it works for you. So always tune into your inner voice and what feels right, even if logically it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think that's such an important point. And, and let's face it, social media has a big influence on this. And, and if I look on social media or Facebook, um, you see those that are posting their wonderful lives and their wonderful vacations. And it's, oh boy, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, uh, right. right? You want to be. But I also see a lot of uh, playing the role of the victim uh, um, through social media. So you, you tend to have these two types, two uh, uh, corners. Um, and so I, I see this playing the role of a victim as being a, a concern. You talk about that, in fact, Melissa. So um, how can that actually hurt you? Well, I always say don't be the victim in your story. Be the hero in your story. Because let's face it, every single one of us has, has had something terrible happen to us. And we can all point the finger. You know, we can say, oh, it's my parents, it's my partner, it's my teacher. But really... We can't always handle the circumstances, like it, we don't always choose the circumstances, but we can handle how we react to them. So how do you want to show up? So decide, how do I want to show up? What do I want to create? And what can I do? What impact do I want to have here? And how can I change it? And you can always change the situation around. But you have to realize that you are powerful enough. You are the CEO of your life and you can change any situation around. So that's, so no truth has ever more been spoken when you speak of, when you do articulate that and, and help people we could only integrate it and i think trust has a big factor to play in that and i know that you speak about that in in your book you talk about trust in divine timing what do you mean by that well as we go through different different difficulties in life you know you you know you might lose your job you might lose a relationship we tend to lose trust. It's, it's our default mechanism. We, we just tend to lose trust and it's normal that we go through that. But then you also have to remember the miracles that do happen when you do meet that special person or you do have that great job or something amazing happens and those miracles make life worthwhile. So trust in those miracles. If you're following what you love, if your thoughts, your words and your actions are aligned with your passion and you keep on moving towards it, things will work out. You just have to trust that they will. So uh, trust is absolutely a, a big factor. This is Melissa Don, CEO of Your Life and uh, teaching us how to be your best self. Melissa, um, I mentioned I was with my son uh, in, in Whistler. We had uh, some good uh, father-son bonding and some great team. And, um, you know, he, he likes his studies. He's, he's really into that. But we had some good life experiences uh, out, out on the road. And Sometimes uh, I explained to him, sometimes you just got to go with your gut. You know, we had to drive in rainy, snowy conditions to go see a Vancouver Canucks game. We knew it was a big drive. You know? And sometimes you got to go with your gut. It might be a bit ris risky. And in fact, that's a big part of being CEO of your life. You, you're a big proponent of going with your gut, aren't you? Exactly. Because you have to remember that 98% of our thoughts are not ours. So what does that mean? Hmm. It comes from our family, it comes from our teachers, it comes from the people around us. So there's really just 2% of our thoughts that belong to us. So how can you know if you have, in your head is everything you were taught, but inside is your feelings, it's your path. So you, and you need to think less and feel hmm. more. Yeah, so true. <laughs> so as soon as something's feeling wrong, sometimes you're like, but this doesn't make logical sense. Like logically it makes sense. Well, why is that? gut feeling going off there's a reason it's giving you a warning and pay attention to it don't ignore it when you push it down things in life will happen in a way that it's going to come back up so just listen to it so it's bound to go somewhere right and that's certain i certainly uh, share that sentiment when i work with people with grief counseling and i tell them that it, it's got to go somewhere right so exactly. this is all 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 the challenges that we face life is going to put challenges in front of you how you navigate them is very much up to you and so how would you notice uh, what red flags are that come up within the context of this perhaps lack of trust or lack of listening to your gut? What would those red flags be? 
something that you could be in making a business decision or you could be at work and your boss tells you do this and then you're gut your gut feeling you're like this doesn't feel right but my boss is telling me to do it well speak it up say you know what this this doesn't feel right like let's look at what else is possible don't ignore it like just speak what you're feeling like bring it out so that you can have another possibility and another option because if you just keep quiet nothing will change yeah, that's very very true and and i think uh, just to, to wrap it up uh, you talk about a, an issue i think that affects a lot of people about being perfect it's got to be perfect don't allow yourself for error but that is problematic isn't it I remember one of the activities we did when I was in coaching school was they gave us a sticker and they wrote the word failure on it and we had to talk about how we felt about wearing the sticker and it bothered me so much I ripped it off <laughs> it's like there's no failure like I just want to work on being perfect but you know over the years and through experience I realized that well first of all uh, Perfection is relative, like everybody sees perfection through a different lens. Mm -hmm. But also, when you fail, it's, it helps you try again. It opens new doors. It forces your creativity. And, and often, like when you have a low and you have a failure, you question things more, and then you come back so much stronger. So let's stop, like, boo-hooing failure and, uh, you know, celebrate failure. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, we learned a lot, and uh, your approach is fabulous. Uh, thank you so much for weathering the storm and coming in and sharing some enlightening information with us. Um, how can people get a hold of you? You can go to my website, ceoofyour.life. I had mentioned the values exercise if you want to get clear on your values, which is one of the things towards becoming a CEO of your life. So you can get that at ceoofyour.life forward slash values. That's fantastic. Thank Melissa, you so thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Coming up right after the news, you absolutely don't want to miss our interview with Stanley Cup champion Theo Fleury. He holds nothing back as he talks with Matt about his troubled past, the trauma he experienced as a victim of sexual abuse, and his incredible advocacy work for those with mental illness, addiction, and trauma, tra and trauma victims. Dun, 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 dun. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, wow. Good job. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look close up on you now. Thank you. Oh, we're gonna get oh, one of them. Yes, the book. definitely. And our next week's guest, we got Tarek in there. <laughs> Where's the book? Oh, I got the book right here. Okay, I attract what I am. Can you see that? Great book. Okay, got to please get tell it. Tell them to Listen. tune in by radio now. Don't forget, we are are doing a tape. So now, unfortunately, we won't be Facebook Live, but. Go on radio, go on uh, iHeartRadio on your computer, and listen to this incredible interview with Theo Fleury. See you next week. CJD800 or CJD.com. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Bye-bye.